Well, hello, Church. It's Pastor Jeremy coming to you from the Parsonage with another weekly devotion. Today we continue our tour of the stained glass windows at the Court Street United Methodist Church as we finish looking at the poor in spirit window in the Court Street Chapel. Last time we looked at this window, we talked about what Jesus meant when he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We learned that people have lots of ideas about who Jesus meant when he talked about the poor in spirit. I like to believe that Jesus was talking about people who are short of breath and on the verge of giving up. The artist who designed this window had his own idea of who Jesus was talking about when he mentioned the poor in spirit. In the top panel of this window, we see a scene from the childhood of Jesus. In fact, this window contains a scene from the only story we have from those mysterious years between the birth of Jesus and the beginning of his ministry. This story, which we find in the Gospel of Luke, tells us that when Jesus was 12 years old, he and his family took a trip to the big city of Jerusalem. They were in the city for a religious festival, and the streets were packed with people, And at some point, Jesus and his parents became separated. When they realized that Jesus was missing, his parents scrambled all around the city looking for their son. Finally, after days of searching, they discovered Jesus in the temple. And that's where we see Jesus in the stained glass window. He is in the temple, the home of God on earth. And when Jesus' parents located him, He was teaching the wise religious leaders, the scholars and teachers and preachers who worked in the temple. In his hand, we can see a scroll, and the religious scholars are at the feet of Jesus, learning from him the way disciples would learn from a rabbi, amazed that such a young boy could have such a deep understanding of the ways of God. The artist who designed this window believes that these religious leaders are the poor in spirit whom Jesus came to bless. They are teachers and scholars, but they are also humble and eager to listen and to learn. They know that even though they have fancy degrees from expensive institutions and schools of theology, they don't have God all figured out. They know that when it comes to the ways of God, even those who have studied God the longest might as well be beggars with empty pockets. The poor in spirit are those people who are wise enough to keep on seeking knowledge and truth. All around Jesus, we see symbols of Jewish law and teaching and knowledge. The scales of justice hang above his head. The tablets containing the Ten Commandments stand next to Jesus. And there's an open book on the other side of Jesus. In the lower part of the window, we see symbols to remind us that we can seek truth and knowledge right here in the city of Flint. Down in the bottom of the window, you might recognize the Robert T. Longway Planetarium and the logo of the College Cultural Development Center from back in the 1960s next to the lamp of knowledge. I like this take on what it means to be poor in spirit. I like the idea that we will receive God's blessings as we seek knowledge and truth. And I especially like the idea that true knowledge leads to humility. I've noticed that the people I've met in this world who I would consider to be saints with a capital S the people who I would say know the most about the ways of God are also the people who are least likely to speak for God or to brag about how they have God figured out or to impose their ideas about God on other people. If that's what it means to be poor in spirit, then I pray that God would make me poor like them. Would you pray with me? God who created everything, Make us curious. Make us seekers of knowledge and truth. That we might be gentle 
and humble and poor in spirit. Through Jesus, who taught the teachers. Amen. Well, thank you for spending some time with us today. You can find a new devotion right here every Wednesday at noon. Until we meet again, keep washing your hands, keep wearing your mask, and do not be afraid.